Carol and welcome to the show. If this is your first time watching, welcome. In the middle, after the break, we have a fitness routine, a fun fitness routine. Because of my broken foot, we're going to be doing that in a chair, but you can do it standing up if you prefer. We meet again the wellness keeper Karen and she has some more tips for helping us to keep our energy going as we age. And then we're going to learn more about Life Ball, the game you play for life. This is a team sport, a cross between netball and basketball, and has men and women playing up to the age of 90. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Over 50, so what? Fantastic to have you on the show. Hi Carol, how are you going? Um, tell us about the mitochondria. That's important for our energy levels and our well-being. And what, you know, what is the mitochondria? What's the role that it plays and how do we look after the mitochondria? So that's a great question, Carol. You know, our mitochondria, if you haven't heard of, they are little cells in our body and they are your energy generators of your body, your, yourself, you know. So they play two roles though. They're either in an, in an energy generation mode or they are in a defense mode. And when they're in a the defense mode, they um, do not produce any energy. Um, but what puts them in the defense mode is if you or your body is feeling any type of stress. The opposite of that uh, from a mitochondria point of view is to, is, is to find ways to keep your mitochondria happy. Because if your mitochondria are happy, then they're always in an energy generation mode. And that's where you start getting all the benefits of, you know, high energy levels, long, longevity, vitality, and, you know, anti-aging sort of, uh, and, and anti-inflammation sort of uh, benefits, and which make you look younger as you get older. Yeah. And we all want that. So, so what are your top tips then for overcoming burnout and fatigue and to keep those mitochondria happy so that we've got good energy? The first um, big point in terms of what keeps you healthy, keeps you energetic, keeps your mitochondria happy is to um, look at your circadian rhythm and your sleep. The most important thing uh, around that is all around light. So being able to expose yourself as much to as much natural sunlight in the daytime when we're meant to be exposing ourselves to sunlight because we know once we step outside into some sun, we always feel very energized very quickly, right? Whilst when you're in a dark room, you feel sleepy, you feel tired. Um, so there's a huge difference and light makes a huge difference. But the opposite to that is to ensure that at night, when the sun has gone down and your body needs that cue to rest and relax and get ready for bed to go to sleep and have been in an optimal sleep condition, is to reduce the amount of light that you're exposed to. So that's the number one tip out of the five. Yep, so sleep in darkness and in the daytime, expose yourself to as much sunlight in the morning. Um, a biohacker is instead of using sunglasses when you're out and about walking during the day, is to use a hat because the hat then cuts the glare away, but the sunglasses is not therefore filtering your eyes from getting that natural sunlight into your body and uh, resetting your circadian rhythm. So. That's a biohack there. It's a really simple one. Um, top tip number two is to look at your um, nutrition and your gut health. That's mainly plants, eat not too much and, you know, eat real foods. So eating whole foods, nothing processed because every, anytime you put something processed into your body, that is a stress because it's got chemicals, it's got, you know, um, colorings and all this additives and stuff, which is a stress to your body. So eating whole foods and eating lots more veggies, up to nine cups of veggies a day. Um, third point is to, uh, it's all around stress. So when we are stressed, we often don't breathe deep enough. So we don't breathe from our bellies and we don't breathe, we breathe from our chest or we hold our breath. So just ensuring that we're aware and conscious of that and breathing through our noses and finding more tools to manage your stress levels. So laughing and dancing are two um, amazing ways. And I know, Carol, you do a lot of that. Um, laughing and dancing are really good ways to boost your energy levels very quickly because it changes your physiology. And while, while you're doing laughing and dancing, you have to 
you know, you're always breathing in a lot more oxygen, which goes to your brain, which keeps, um, you know, makes you more focused and clear very quickly. Yeah. So that's number three. Um, number four is all around exercise. You know, we do need to make sure that we, and I, I like to use the word movement over exercise. Um, movement and one way of moving is walking. And, you know, for us that are approaching our 50s or over 50s, walking is a very, very easy way of, um, you know, keeping ourselves moving for mobility and longevity and, you know, ensuring that we are getting out there on a daily basis out in the sun and also in fresh air. And the fifth point is all around mindset, you know, and your emotional side of things. So as we talked about breathing and stress and when we don't, when we're stressed, we don't breathe well enough is to just be very conscious about breathing. So daily taking six deep breaths a day consciously is enough to boost your energy levels and get you out of that sympathetic, you know, stress fight and flight mode back into the rest and relax mode. And when you're in your rest and relax mode, your mitochondria are happy. And therefore when your mitochondria are happy, your energy levels go up. That's six a day. That's it. At the start of the day, because, you know, I'll, you know, we, we know so much about the fact that how you start your morning creates the rest of your day. Go for a 20 or 30 minute walk out in the fresh air in the day, in the light and take your yeah. six breaths and have a healthy breakfast. Um, and that, that basically set you off for the whole day. That, that's in really, really simple terms. You know, those are some of the basic foundations. Now, what about this uh, thing about aging and people want to slow down the, the effects of aging. So yeah. I assume that some of the tips are that just what you've been saying is going to help with the aging process anyway. Do you have any additional tips for slowing down and reversing the aging process? Um, as we spoke about, you know, there's three secrets on detoxing, healing and thriving um, play a huge, huge part along with, you know, how we keep our mitochondria happy for how we age. Um, it's an aging is a natural process. So with your mitochondria, what happens is your over, over time as we, as we get older, your mitochondria count halves and that's what the aging process is about. But all these biohacks and if, you know, we can tap into some, uh, some really simple, positive healthy habits that you can do daily and keep your stress levels low you can eliminate the um, reduction of your mitochondria count you can slow that down or you can actually double that and that's why you find some amazing 80 90 year olds doing pole dancing and you know lifting amazing weights and that sort of stuff and with aging there's so much you know it's not just about looking good but it's also about feeling good you know you want to you you, you want to look good and you can look good by getting all those anti-aging creams and all those gels and that sort of stuff to put on ourselves but then you need to feel good too you need to match you know you need to have that 25 year old in you that's coming out at the same time as looking 25 even though you're like 70 or 80 right it's not just about our looks it's about feeling good too well i like your thing about the 25 year old i interviewed a, a, a lady in her she was close to 80 and she said if anyone asked me my age she says i'm 25 because i feel like i'm 25 so i'm going to take 25 forever <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we're all about age is just a number on this show. So <laughs> so that's going to help us all today. Now, thanks so much for coming on the show, Karen. No worries. Thanks for that. I love sharing. So, you know, anytime. Five minutes a day and you're on your way. Welcome to Five Minute Fitness. Yes, I'm in the chair doing chair exercise today. If you can do it standing up, please go ahead. We're going to have a lot of fun. Forward, forward, back, back. Forward, forward, back, back. So we go forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, punch, punch. One, two, three, four, punch, punch. One, two, three, four, punch, punch. And we have two side legs to the side. One and two. One and two. One. And then we're going to put the arms in. One, like this. And down, down, up, up. And we're ready to go. Let's have some fun.
the importance to keep yourself moving as you get older and when you move and combine that with a team sport the benefits are even greater to our mental and our emotional health now today on the bucket list we've got something you might like to try and it's called life ball you may or may not have heard about it but if you used to play a team sport in the past it's definitely something you should take a look at now that you're over 50. We met the founder and designer of Lifeball a couple of times, Colin Wilson Lord. And we have with us today, roving ambassador for Lifeball Australia, Rupert Cheatham. Now Rupert's played and promoted Lifeball in 40 different locations all over Australia. He's been coach and player with Benalla Club for over 15 years and he's currently now with the Wangaratta Lifeball Club. Hi Rup, welcome to Over 50 So What? Great to have you on the show. A pleasure to be with you. 
and we're looking forward to hearing all about life ball we did uh, actually touch on it about a last year a lot of viewers won't have heard about it so you're the roving ambassador you've been all over Australia so can you tell us how life ball has been adapted for older adults you know it's a combination of netball and basketball and what's been done to make it safer for older adults well i think watching the word go colin wilson lord who created the uh, the rules uh didn't want to have uh, a uh, wanted a game that had uh, you know very easy conditions for people to play so they weren't going to have a, a problem at all regardless of their age whether it was primary school kids or right through to people um, in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. So what are some of the rules? There's no running, no going backwards and, and there's something to do with the, the net too, isn't there? We're not to throw the ball high. So in this particular case, we're looking to have no running, no walking backwards, no jumping, uh, no slam dunking. <laughs> <laughs> They're all things that um, uh, you know, to make life nice and easy for um, most of the people who play are retirees, so uh, it suits their game really well. So what normally happens when people come along? You don't just head straight into a game. What, how long is it and what happens? Well, on the first day, um, the people come along and usually they're, they're introduced to a few of the members. And usually on the first day, they, they don't charge anybody. They just come and see and just try, come out to try. And, uh, and then they will uh, partake in the, uh, the activities that are on. And usually it starts off with a, a warm up. Or, and, and then after that, and then there's a series of little exercises to warm up all of your joints, and make sure they're nice and loose. And then after that, if they uh, still a little bit um, not sure about themselves, we'll let them watch part of the game and then they'll bring them on with a, a person who is very experienced and they will play uh, usually in the centre of the, the court. So if someone has never played netball, never played basketball, never played a ball sport, uh, can they come along and give, have a go? Right. Quite a lot of the, uh, the people we have there um, have uh, been academically, uh, uh, you know, that's their, their way of life. And then all of a sudden they say, yes, we'll have a go. And, uh, and usually by the end of the day, they've um, socialised, they've um, had a, a physical workout and also a mental workout because it's a game that uses your brain. So if you've got a physical limitation like a hip replacement or a knee replacement or any other things, do you have a lot of players with those sorts of conditions? One um, lady in particular had a problem with her shoulders. And so any time she was going to throw for the goal, we would make sure that she was very close to the goal rather than in a normal position. Another person I played against, he's been in a very bad car accident. Only one arm to, that was uh, active to grab a ball. And uh, he, his sight distance was about three metres. So we had special rules for him. So you mentioned it's retirees. So what sort of ages do you get there? And it's men and women, obviously. And what sort of ages? Well, most of them, I'd say the average would be in the 70s. But yes, there's, most of them are retirees. So from about 60 onwards. And um, as I say, I've played against three ladies who are in their 90s. And there's clubs all over Australia. So if someone wants to find out where the local club is, most of the clubs I gather do offer the first one for free so you can come and try it out. Um, so they can just contact us at our website and we, we can uh, let people know where the closest or give them the contact email. That's right. There's the, you know, as I say, I've played at 40 different places around Australia. And uh, it's amazing how you're, you're meeting up with a, a group of people that you've never seen before and you've had a ball. <laughs> really enjoyable. So with you laughing, I believe some people call it laugh ball instead of life ball. 
because you have such a good time. That's correct. Actually, there's one uh, club up in uh, up in northern New South Wales. They call themselves the Laugh Ballers, <laughs> but it's, it's amazing. We uh, the number of times that you make a mistake, you know, like passing a ball to the opposition, and everyone will laugh, including yourself. You know, you that's just one of those things, and. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you've come off and you've laughed a hundred times. <laughs> so they say that life ball is the game that you play for life. What would you say to anybody looking at this today, viewers watching us today, what would you say to them if they're thinking about coming along and trying it out? By all means, come along. And I feel sure that uh, by the end of the day, you, you will have, uh, as I say, been used to getting a physical workout. Not a real hard one, but nice and gentle. And uh, mentally, you'll understand that there's a, a tactics uh, that, that, that develop over a period of time. And of course, the social uh, afterwards, we turn around and have a, a morning cup of tea or afternoon cup of tea. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's all good fun. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Roop, and uh, telling us all about life for. We hope lots of people get out there and give it a go. It doesn't matter whether you're 60, 80, you've got a, a bung shoulder, a bung knee, just come out and have some fun. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Yep. So thanks for coming on the show, Roop. Very, very enjoyable. Catch you later. Thanks. Bye. I'm constantly amazed at how many activities people are doing into their 80s. If you want to find a life ball club near you or some information on raising your energy levels with Karen, just go to our website. And please join our Facebook group, YouTube Over 50 So What. Replays are on there and information as well. And remember, for a free copy of Alive and Kicking, The Secrets of Energy and Vitality, just go to the website, carolohalloran.com. Keep active and maybe check out Life Ball, the game you play for life. I'm Carol and this is Over 50 So What? watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>